Hi guys, it's SBIT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today we have another smartphone review for you today. I said today already. We've got a smartphone for you and basically it's been advertised as a bezel-less display again to try and compete with the likes of the Xiaomi Mi Mix which came out about six months ago. You have the Doogie Mix which I reviewed here which you can go and check out as well. Similar sort of price range to that and as we know the bezel-less you know trying to shrink the chin and the forehead seems to be the big thing in 2017. Well today like I said we have let's try and say this right because it's a bit of a tongue twister the Blue Boo S1 and it's right here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just gonna oh little notification from the old Blue Boo S1. Oh oh it's it's my mum. Hi mum. Oh dear. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of it and then I'm gonna jump on and I'm going to go through some of the features with you, give you my first impressions. Obviously, I haven't had that long to test it, but I am going to be giving you my first impressions. I will hopefully try and do a follow-up video to this as well to let you know after I've used it for, you know, a few days or whatever. Run down some of the specs, do some benchmark tests on it as well, just to give you, an, again, another good idea about what we're dealing with. And then hopefully a bit of a conclusion about whether I think it's going to be an appropriate purchase for you if you are in the market for uh, a fairly cheap, I think it's £123 I've got, on the website at the moment and I will leave the link below for that if you are interested in finding out more information or or indeed purchasing it um, but 125 pounds will say approximately for a Android bezel-less phone or we'll get to the bezel-less anyway because that's one of the talking points okay so here is the box and of course as we mentioned it is the uh, Blue Boo S1 and it does say just there beyond your life. I'm not sure how true that would be You know, it's fairly premium packaging. It's not too, you know, over the top, but it's not too cheap looking and then as you can see there again Nice little, uh, you know, font on there uh, and then of course you have your phone which comes out in this packaging here Which we'll just put to the one side and we'll get to that in a second And then we have the first one here and if we just try and open this box here we have oh a nice little case for it okay so we're just gonna put that to one side you also have your manual in there uh, and you have a little uh, dear cuss that's nice nice little touch from the uh, from the makers we take that out oh just dropped it hopefully not smashed no it's not uh, just the little screen cover uh, which is you know for, again for something so cheap uh, 125 pound phone you get a screen protector which is uh, kind of plasticky uh, it's quite thick actually and of course you have, like I said, this uh, phone case. So we're just gonna take that out. And as you can see, it's clear uh, and it just would snap onto the back of the phone. And the last box inside the main box is this one, which has your charger in, of course. Uh, let's just, so as you can see there, USB type C, which is nice. And you have a little uh, headphone jack to USB as well. For those who are obviously using headphones, which still have the normal jack. And you have your main charger there as well. Then we get onto the piece de resistance. Bit of French there, I think. <laughs> uh, and you basically pop that out there. And you have in the phone uh, a nice little cover on it. And uh, it says S1 there. Very Samson esque, I might add. A uh, bit of a copy, I feel, but uh, anyway. And then you take that off. And that is the phone. As you can see, it is a pretty nice display okay so first thing to know obviously if you look at it as you can see it comes with uh, a fairly stock look in terms of the actual you know a nice black background little feather obviously you can customize this i'm just giving you this is fresh out of the box i have this sort of launcher straight over the top of as you can see there android 7.0 obviously i generally like stock i like to be able to customize it in my own way but as as launchers go it's fairly snappy to be honest at this price range in the market some of the time you get launchers that get proper glitchy and you know there's a lot of bloatware whereas this is you know it's okay uh, it's not amazing but it is nevertheless okay and of course if you were bothered you could put your own like nova launcher or just an android nougat launcher over the nougat nugget it's not, a, it's not a chicken nugget, it's definitely nougat. Obviously in terms of, the, it's very minimalistic, you just have the logo on the back there as you can see. You've got your dual camera there, you have your flash there as well. You've got your volume rocker on the side here and your power button there as well. And on this side you have just your SIM port here. 
So it does come with USB Type-C, which is very, very good, again, for the price. A lot of phones at this sort of price will be micro USB. But of course, Type-C is the latest technology, so that's nice to see. And you've got your microphone and your uh, speaker grill on the bottom there as well. And of course, the selfie camera is right down here. So again, one of the trade-offs of having the sort of bezel-less display is, of course, they usually have a bigger chin to put uh, the actual camera. Or the Essential phone, for example, which has it at the top now, and it's kind of a cutout on the display. And the Samsung S8 still has that uh, really slender top bezel. Um, can still fit the camera in, but of course, if you're losing that almost completely, you're obviously gonna have the trade-off of having the selfie camera at the bottom. Something you get used to in terms of taking selfies, you might have to turn your phone up the other way or whatever, but it's a little bit irritating, but it's not the end of the world. It's obviously very square in design. It reminds me actually quite a lot of the Sony Old, the old Sony Xperia phones, but obviously minus the bezel. So if you are a fan of Sony and you like that sort of, you know, square, minimalistic, but square kind of look, you don't like the rounded edges like you would find on an iPhone or a Samsung or the Ulephone phone that I reviewed of a similar price to this, which looked like the iPhone 7 Plus. As you can see on here, it's, uh, you know, it's, it is gonna be a fingerprint magnet. As you can see, it's got, you know, fingerprints all over the show. Um, it's very shiny. It kind of feels a little bit like it's trying to be kind of ceramic, which seems to be a very popular new thing with a lot of phones. Well, a few phones anyway, that they going down this sort of ceramic when going away from the metal and glass. Um, it kind of feels like it's meant to be resembling that, but obviously a cheaper version. So it is, of course, plastic, um, which is disappointing. But again, you'd, be, you'd struggle to make a ceramic phone on this sort of budget. The other color for this phone, it is also available in white. So it's black and white, same composition, same materials, just the white version, obviously. Now the main selling point is obviously the fact that it's, it's advertised as a bezel-less phone. Now like with the Doogie Mix, this is a slight, not con, but it's not the exact truth because as you can see, there is a quite a thin, it is thin, but it is a bezel Nevertheless, so to say it's bezel-less, sorry for my uh, plaster by the way there. You should have seen the other guy. No, <laughs> but yeah, so it's not a bezel-less display. Close enough, uh, and again for the price, it's it's still considered probably a pretty good display, but it is not 100% bezel-less like the actual photos on the website, for example, which is a little bit disappointing, but it is a 90% screen to body ratio. So that is pretty impressive nevertheless for the price. And as you can see, you've got your software uh, buttons at the bottom so they're not attached to the chin at all so you've got back there you've got your home button and you've got your recent apps now it does have this little widget here which a lot of phones have to be honest nowadays especially again around this price bracket they seem to enjoy uh, adding this little function where you can obviously toggle your wi-fi and your bluetooth and home and all that sort of stuff which you still can normally get from the top so for me personally i don't think it's necessary um but it is an option you can have unfortunately it doesn't seem like you can get rid of it though, unless it, obviously in your system settings you might be able to get rid of it, but you can't just sort of swipe it to the top or bottom to get rid of it like you can do with a lot of different widgets. So again, some people might like it, some people won't, up to them. So you've got your settings bar there and it has wireless update ready to go. So, you know, out of the box, they are still updating it. So that is pretty good to see. There is that sort of aftercare support to some extent. So I'm gonna talk through some of the specs now. So we've got a 5.5 inch display and it's Corning Glass Gorilla 4. The display is of course 1080p. So it is a full HD display, which again is more than acceptable for the price range. Uh, it's Android 7.0 and the processor is Helio P20 which seems to be a very popular processor for this sort of price bracket of phone. It is rocking four gigabytes of RAM. So of course, uh, you multitasking shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's quite a you know substantial amount of RAM. 64 gigabytes of storage, so that's quite a lot of storage. You shouldn't really need too much more than that. It does say on the website the 4G bands are 800, 900, 1800, uh, 2100, and 2600. Some phones have problems in the UK with O2, um, like the Xiaomi phones. A lot of them uh, actually struggle with O2 due to the 800 bandwidth. This one uh, is has got has got that one. This one has got that one, so you shouldn't have too many problems with your 4G using this phone. Bluetooth 4.0. Okay, so fingerprint sensor, as you can see, we're just gonna press it and it loads pretty much. Every now and again, you get a little glitch like that and it doesn't quite pick it up, but nine times out of 10, it works really, really well. Now, of course, um, it is slightly more delayed than uh, some more expensive phones, for example. So when you like 
For example, you put your finger on it, it does load up straight away, but you have to press the power button first for it to be that quick. If your screen's off and you try and do it, it does still do it, but again, there's that little delay, uh, which is more the delay of the screen on. As you can see, when even when you press the power button, it doesn't come on like instantly, instantly, but it does, you know, within a second or so it comes on. So it's more the reliability that I look for in a fingerprint phone. A fingerprint phone, a fingerprint sensor, should I say. I'm more bothered by the actual sensor. And as you can see, it does work nearly all of the time when you're in like a pretty decent position. If you're slightly at an angle, it doesn't always pick it up. But again, you know, it does see like that, for example, didn't pick it up. But if you press it on normally, it does pick it up. It's just a slight delay. Now, every now and again, I am getting a slight glitch on the phone where it, it doesn't quite register the hand touch. Um, how serious that is, I won't know until I look into it in more detail. You know, it is just something to note that, again, due to this price range, every now and again, uh, you will get a slight glitch and potentially you might have to reboot the phone. Again, it's what's important to you. If you want something that's going to work flawlessly, then this won't be the phone for you. If you want a few glitches here and there, but a cheap phone that's a pretty decent display, for example, then, of course, that's when you start looking at it. So we're on to the camera. Um, this is going to be your mixed bag in terms of actual performance because so the back camera is a 30 megapixel and a 3 megapixel camera. The front facing camera is 5 megapixels. It does get quite overexposed at times as you can see there. It does look nice having this, you know, almost bezel-less display when you're using your camera though. It just gets pretty grainy in low light as you would expect from this sort of price range. And the colours are fairly representative. It doesn't get too oversaturated for example. Now obviously this is also advertised as the dual camera and the dual camera, well, whether there's a dual camera there is obviously the first question that you'd have to ask yourself just due to the fact that when you actually look at the back, it's it's questionable uh, whether one of those is a toy. Um, but more importantly, when you try and use the actual dual camera, which is of course called blur mode, it becomes very, very jarry and laggy as you can see. And then if you were to actually click on something that you actually want to, you know, use as the focal point and blur the background. It takes quite a long time to take that photo. But as you can see, you don't necessarily need the dual camera to do that. You know, you can do that just using, you know, one lens and it, it does look slightly artificial. Not quite as artificial as the the camera on the phone I reviewed which was £50 which I did last week uh, but it is nevertheless as you can see there it's not going to be the best at doing this um, so you know jury's out on that dual camera. Just going to flip round and show you the selfie camera and as you can see it's not a great looking just gonna look at that. Yeah, it's not a great selfie camera. Um, obviously, I just I was looking up there, but then I remembered that the camera is, of course, on this one here, the lower bezel, the chin. The graininess is, of course, to be expected uh, due to the price, but um, it's not gonna be the best selfie camera you're ever gonna use. Some of the best selfies you will ever see right there. Mmm, looking good. Wow. Now the battery, the battery is 3,500 milliamps and with that battery size and not having a 4K screen, it will last you uh, pretty much most of the day. One final thing I wanted to add um, when using this phone, I have noticed that the actual audio isn't great, I'm not gonna lie. Um, as you can see, the screen, 1080p, you know, fairly rich colours again for the price, but the audio isn't great at all. It is quite tinny in terms of media viewing and consumption, like if you're using Kodi, for example, or, or any other media streaming apps, the audio isn't going to be great for you. So ladies and gents, that was my review of the Blue Boo S1. Like and share if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. Subscribe, of course, and hit that little notification button if you want to be notified every time I do reviews on smartphones, Android boxes, tutorials, whether it be on media streaming, uh, software, hardware, all of, you know, tech stuff, really. Tech stuff, you know, as, a, as an average consumer kind of person. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this and whether you think that it's something that you would consider buying or whether there's something out there that is, you know, of a similar price that's a better version of this. Again, happy to hear your thoughts. And if I haven't heard of the phone you're talking about, I'll try and get my hands on it and of course do a review so that all the viewers can get the best information uh, about what we're talking about. That sentence didn't make sense. <laughs>
If you are interested in more smart phone reviews, I will leave a link to a playlist where I have got other phone reviews in there. So I've got a real range from expensive to budget flagships to budgets to ridiculously cheap like the last one I did before this which was like 50 quid so I have started doing a wide range so I have I have started doing a lot of different reviews on different I'll see you in the next one says BRT Peter hi guys there's BRT and welcome back to a brand new video now I'm not gonna lie I'm feeling a little bit ropey